For the H beam section shown, determine the flange width B, which will make the moments of inertia about the central X and Y axes equal. So we want to find IX and IY, and we want to figure out how we can find B so that these are the same. The axes that we need to take these about are the central axes. So if you consider the first axis would be the one that runs right through the middle horizontally. To do that, we can find what IX is. Now remember, about the centroidal axis, each of these is rectangles. We can do the left piece, the middle piece, and the right piece, and they're all rectangles. The centroidal moment of inertia for a rectangle is 1 12th base times height cubed, where the base is along the axis and the height is measured perpendicular to the axis you're taking your moment of inertia about. So in this case, B, the base, is going to be in this direction, and the height is going to be in this direction. So our left piece, the left part of the H, is 1 12th base times height cubed is 10 times B cubed. The middle will be 1 12th times 80, that's the base, 100 minus 2 times 10, and 10 cubed. The right piece will be 1 12th times 10 times B cubed. Now, every time you're going to do a moment of inertia using composite body methods, you have to also consider the parallel axis theorem. So your columns look like this, where D is the distance between your axis you're taking your moment of inertia about. So in this case, this x-axis and the centroid of each of your pieces. Well, difference, the distance between my left-hand box right here, the centroid of that is actually on my x-axis. So the distance between the centroid of my left-hand piece and my x-axis is zero. This is the same thing for the middle. The centroid of the middle is on the x-axis. So the distance between the centroid of the middle and the x-axis is zero. And so is the thing for the right-hand side. So I don't even care what the areas are. There are no parallel axis theorem requirements. All I can say is my IX is 1 12th times two of these, top and the left and right are the same, so I can say this is 20B cubed plus the middle one, 80 times 10 cubed. Each of them have a 1 12th in it. And you can simplify that. That's 5 thirds B cubed plus 20,000 over 3. Or you could get a decimal equivalent for that if you'd like. That's IX. The other thing we need to find is IY. So if we look at the same H but a different axis, now we're going to consider the axis that goes right through the middle. This is the Y axis. And we're going to do the same sort of thing. Each of these is, is still rectangles. We can still consider the left piece, the middle piece, and the right piece. Except now we need to find IY. For the rectangle, you still have 1 12th base times height, but now the base goes in this direction, and the height is perpendicular to the y-axis, which is in this direction. So the base here is B, and the height is going to be 10. So you've got 1 12th B 10 cubed. In the middle, you'll have 1 12th times 10 times 80 cubed. And in the right-hand side, you have 1 12th times B times 10 cubed. Again, the top, the left-hand piece and the right-hand piece are going to be the same. Anytime you do a composite body to find a moment of inertia, you need to consider the parallel axis theorem for each of your pieces. The left-hand piece, the distance between my y-axis and the centroid of my left-hand piece will be 45. So if you go all the way from the center all the way out to here, you have 50. That would be half of the 100 millimeters. And then you've got to come back 5 to get to the middle of the left-hand piece. That would be the same thing for the right-hand piece. You go from the y-axis all the way out to the middle piece. The middle of the right-hand piece, that would be 45 millimeters. The middle piece has its centroid on the y-axis, so d is zero. Now the area of my right and left-hand pieces are b times 10, which gives you d squared a of 45 squared times 10 times b for each of the left and right hand pieces and of course the middle is zero. Your moment of inertia about the y-axis is noticing that the t right and left hand pieces are the same. I can say this is 2 times 1 12th 
times b times 10 cubed plus 1 twelfth times 10 times 80 cubed plus 2 times 45 squared times 10 times b. And that's the sum of the i column <coughs> and the sum of the d squared a column. You can simplify that out a little bit and you get 122,000 over 3 times b plus 1.28 million over 3. We need to find b so that ix equals iy. So set these two equal. 5 thirds b cubed plus 20,000 over 3 is 122,000 over 3 times b plus 1.28 million over 3. You can simplify that out. That's 1 twelfth b cubed minus 6100 over 3 times b minus 21,000 equals 0. There are a wide number of ways you can simplify that and a number of ways you can solve the equation, but however you do it, you get 161 millimeters for b.